When considering chemistry in a quantitative manner, and especially when we are dealing with measurements, it is important that we know about units of measurement. Science, and in particular chemistry, involves quantifying our observations, and we typically do this in one of two ways. The first way we do it is to count. For example, we can make an observation here that we have eight paper clips, or we have two water molecules, and in those two water molecules, we have a total of two oxygen atoms and four hydrogen atoms. Counting is considered to be exact. There should be no error involved when we count objects. And that is different to the other way we quantify our observation, and that's by taking measurements. Now we are familiar with, for example, measuring the length of an object, and we can make a statement here that the length of this paper clip is approximately 3.5 centimeters in length, or that the mass of a water molecule is approximately 18.02 atomic mass units. Both of these measurements, and indeed all measurements, are not exact. They are subject to limited accuracy and limited precision. It's important we understand that measured quantities contain two equally important parts. The length of this paper clip, for example, has a magnitude of 3.5, and it has the unit of centimetres, both of which are equally important. Both should be reported and recorded, and both need to be taken into account when we are considering calculations involving measurements. It is completely meaningless to say that the length of the paperclip is 3.5. We need both the magnitude and the unit to best represent the length of this paperclip as 3.5 centimetres. Measurements are made with reference to a fixed standard of measurement, or what we call a unit of measurement. So, for example, when we make the claim that somebody is two metres tall, we are actually saying they are two times the standard unit for length or distance, and that is two times one metre, the metre being the standard unit for length or distance. And 2.0 times one metre is 2.0 metres. Similarly, when we make the claim that someone has a mass of 85 kilograms, we are actually saying that their mass is 85 times the standard unit for mass which is the kilogram, 85 times one kilogram being 85 kilograms. Now these units of measurements, the meter and the kilogram are precisely defined. For example, the meter is precisely defined as the distance traveled by light in a vacuum in that many seconds, one over 299,792,458 seconds. And similarly, a kilogram is equal to the mass of the international prototype kilogram, which is a cylindrical piece of platinum iridium alloy located in the sealed vault just outside of Paris in France. We've come across two of the most important standard units of measurement, the meter and the kilogram. It turns out that there are a total of seven base units of measurement from which all other measurements are derived. The System International, or SI units of measurement, define the meter as the base unit for measuring length or distance. The kilogram is the base unit for quantifying mass. The second is the unit for quantifying time. The Kelvin is the standard SI unit for quantifying temperature. The mole, a very important unit in chemistry, is the unit for measuring the amount of a substance. And it's really important in chemistry that we don't get the amount of a substance measured in moles, confused with the mass of the substance, whose units are kilograms. And the last two base SI units are the ampere for quantifying electrical current and the candela for quantifying luminous intensity. Now you recall when we made that measurement of our paperclip, we said it was 3.5 centimetres in length. So the length was reported not with reference to the base unit of metres, but with the prefix centi. And there is a whole bunch of prefixes we need to remember and understand in science and in chemistry. Each of these prefixes comes with a name, a symbol, and each refers to some fraction of, or some whole number multiplication of, a base unit. For example, you're already familiar with the prefix centi, with the symbol being lowercase c, and with a meaning of one one hundredth of, such as centimetre. You'd also be familiar with milli, with a lowercase m, meaning one one thousandth of. Micro, one one millionth of. Nano, one one billionth of. And pico, one one trillionth of. At the other end of the table, we have kilo, lowercase k, 
meaning a thousand times or a multiplier of 1000. We've got mega, capital M, referring to a million times, giga, capital G, meaning a billion times, and terra, capital T, meaning a multiplier of a trillion. These prefixes can appear in front of the base units from the table we saw a little earlier, such as centimetre, millimole, microampere, or they can appear in front of so-called derived units, such as gigawatt, megapascal, and kilojoule. Now the watt, the joule, and the pascal are examples of derived units, units that result from combinations of one or more of the seven base SI units. For example, the joule is the SI unit for energy, and we can see that this unit is ultimately derived from the base units of kilograms, meters, and seconds. In the next video, we will look more closely at four of the most important derived units in chemistry, namely volume and density, as well as molar mass and molarity.